All right. Welcome to my lecture on significant figures. And I will commonly refer to them as sig figs as well, as it's a lot easier to say than the full words. So significant figures are super important in science because it has to do with how precise our measurements are. And so when we take the measurement, we record not only the, all the numbers we're certain of, we have an estimated digit. And so the measurement to the left would be recorded as what? So where do we measure from um, in a graduated cylinder? Hopefully you said bottom of the meniscus. So if you're looking there, we would record this as 33.5 mils. Now, we say this measurement has three significant figures. This is because three, three, five are each their own significant figure, and in total, we have three. So we're certain that this measurement is at least 33 mils, but less than 34. So remember, this would be the 33 mark, this would be the 34. So then we estimate the measurement between those two values, which is our 0.5. And that digit's considered to be significant as it conveys meaning about the precision. So if we go to the next example here, again, measuring from the bottom of the meniscus, we would record it as 43.0. Now, even though the meniscus is exactly on the division mark, you still need to include the zero as that, again, that last digit is conveying the measurement reflects the precision of the graduated cylinder. So this is saying that our smallest division on there is one mil, but we're estimating it to the nearest tenth. So this point zero, remember, is the tenth place, so that is our estimate. So again, this number has three significant figures. This zero is significant. We'll get more into the rules here in a second. So now looking at a measurement. Now when we look at this, if this is considered 0 0.035, this would be 0 0.037. So it's at least 0 0.035, but not more than 0 0.037. So if we look in between, it looks like it's pretty close to 0 0.036. But... We have to, again, like the problem above, give some precision to it. So we're going to estimate it to be 0 0.0360. So this last zero is that extra estimated value. And so now the number of sig figs here, we're only counting the three, the six, and the zero. The zeros at the beginning are just called placeholders, so they're not considered significant. So let's get into the rules. Now, if we um, are trying to determine sig figs, the first rule is that any non-zero number is significant. So 2.15 centimeters has three. 56.341 has five. So now zeros are what makes it a little bit more complicated. And now we'll start with the first rule here, which is a leading zero. So zeros that become before or after a zero, but they have no non-zeros to their left. That means they're not significant. So here, no non-zeros to the left. The only significant numbers then are two and three. So this has two sig figs. No non-zeros to the left of this zero. So it is only two sig figs for 0 0.12 degrees Celsius as well. Now we have our sandwich zeros or our captive zeros. These zeros are just between two non-zero numbers. So these zeros are between one and three. So that is how we know that they're significant because if they're sandwiched, they're always significant. So there's five total sig figs if we count two, three, zero, zero, one. As for 205, again, this zero is sandwiched, so we have to include it. So two, zero, and five gives us three sig figs. All right. Now, trailing zeros. These are sometimes significant and sometimes not, but it all has to do with the presence of a decimal. If there is a decimal, then the zeros are considered significant. So remember, this is when they're at the end or to the right. 
if there's no decimal point in there to the right, they're not considered significant. So the first example, 7,800. Here, they're to the right and there's no decimal, so they're not significant, so we only have two sig figs. Now, this addition of this decimal not only makes these two significant, but it also makes this zero significant. So total, we have five. And again here, we may not have an actual value that goes after the decimal, but the fact this decimal is here is saying that these are significant. So we have four sig figs for the last problem here. And then the last rule is just saying any exact numbers can have an infinite number of significant figures. These are just defined values. So if we think about, you know, a dozen is equal to 12, you could do 12.00000 forever. So it could have an infinite number of sig figs as this is just an example of an exact number. Okay, let's do some practice problems now. So take a second and pause and work on these on your own. And when you get through these 10 problems, come back and watch and make sure that you got it correct. Okay, you should have paused. So what you should get for number one is remember that any zeros without a non-zero on the left are not significant, so we only have three significant figures. This one, zero to the left with no non-zero, so that's not. But if it's to the right of the decimal, it is significant. So we have two. 610. There's no decimal, and this zero is then not significant, so we only have two. Now we have a decimal, which makes it significant. So now we have three, and a 500. These zeros have no decimal or no non-zero number to make them significant, so we don't count them. So there's only one sig fig in 500. Here, we have sandwiched zeros, so we have four total sig figs as both these zeros count. More sandwich zeros, so we have four again. Here we have them to the right of the decimal and the right of a non-zero number, so we have three total. Here we just have five non-zero numbers. And lastly, all these zeros without a non-zero to the left are not significant. So the only significant portion is the 500 zero zero at the end, which gives us 3. And so our next portion here is we are going to use, not only use our skills of rounding, but we're going to have to round to a specific place as we're only allowed to have 2 sig figs, 3 sig figs, etc. So whatever is defined in the parentheses is how many significant figures you want to round to. So pause again, work through these 10, and then come back to this video when you're done. Okay, you should have paused and tried these on your own. So now we're going to round to two sig figs. Remembering that we first have to determine that these first three zeros, since there's no non-zero to the left, are not significant. So we have three sig figs. We need to cut it down to two. So we want to cut it down to this place here. We look to the right and see that there's a nine, so we need to round up. So you should have gotten 0 0.0053. Now we only have two significant figures. Number two, it is asking us to round to one significant figure. So here, this zero is not significant as it has no non-zeros to the left. This one is, however, so we have to drop that zero to get to one sig fig. 610, if we're rounding to one sig fig, we can only have this place in the hundreds. So we round to 600 as these zeros now become non-significant. Now we need two sig figs since technically this is three that are significant. So what we're going to do is just lose the decimal. Now we need three sig figs. So we're going to this place here. You look to the right and it's a two, so you round down one, four, two, zero. Number six, we need to round to two sig figs as these sandwich zeros count. So we have four sig figs to begin with. We need to cut it down to two. So how I'm going to write it is 
zero as if we want the second number to if we have one then it has to be just point zero and zero makes us round down so 2007 we need just one significant figure this seven here makes these zeros significant so if we just switch that to a zero now our only significant figure is this two rounding from three significant figures to two we just drop that last zero rounding to three sig figs here which means we want to change this place since there's a two next to it we round down so we have six five three and then zero zero and lastly we need two significant figures so remember these are all placeholders that don't matter and we just need to drop a zero at the end. So that gives us 0 0.0000050 to get to two sig figs. Now, when we start doing multiplication and division or adding and subtracting with values, there's a couple of rules. When you're multiplying or dividing, you round to the fewest total number of sig figs. But if you're adding subtraction, adding or subtracting, fewest digits after the decimal. So I'll do one of each with you guys. Now, if we do the first one, if you add up all the values, you should get 95.8. Now we have to look at and see what's limiting us. So addition and subtraction is round to the fewest digits after the decimal. Well, 18 here has no digits after the decimal, so that's what we have to round to. So our answer is going to be 96. And then let's hop to number four. If we do 4.53 and we're multiplying it by 0 0.6483, we have to first figure out how many digits each value has that are significant. So 45.3 has three, 0 0.6483 has four. So we know we want our answer to have only three significant figures as that's what we do for multiplication and division. So 45.3 times 0.6483 is equal to 29.36799. So if we only can have three significant figures, we need to round to the tenths place. And since it's a six, we round up. So we have 20, oops. 29.4 as our answer. Keep working on these problems and I'll be around to help you with any questions.